The Bible does not talk about God, states Mauro Bellino, an Italian author and translator from Masoretic Hebrew, Aramaic, and Ancient Greek to Italian, who was interviewed by a popular Italian podcast called Muschio Selvaggio in 2020. Bellino became viral for his ideas, which doubt the God depicted in the scriptures of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And if the Bible does not talk about God, who is the God of the Bible? And what is the Bible talking about then if it is not the creation of the universe and men? In this video, you're going to cover some of the claims and criticisms in reference to the studies of Mauro Bellino. When asked, why does the Bible not speak about God? Bellino argues that the Bible was never meant to tell about God. Bellino states that after 2,000 years of research, we still do not know who are the original authors of the Bible. We have many copies of the Bible, very different among each other, which were written throughout the span of many centuries. We do not know the original texts of the Bible nor how it was read, but we still claim that those who wrote the Bible were inspired by God. Bellino argues that the Bible is one of the many books that humanity has written in the course of its history. The Bible is a set of books in which the people of Israel intended to write the events of their history and the relationship of this people with their governor, whom the Bible knows by the name of Yahweh. So, it is a story of a small people who lived in a small territory, the story of Israel and their governor. The governor Yahweh was then artificially turned into a spiritual god by the theologians of the following centuries. Probably one of the major issues, argues Bellino, is not that we do not know the authors, nor that the Bible was edited thousands of times by hundreds of different copyists, but that we do not know how to read the Hebrew Bible in the first place. The original Hebrew Bible does not contain vowels, and therefore the meaning of the words can only be guessed through context. Vowels were added a thousand years later to make the reading process simpler, but the Hebrew Bible remains a work of guesswork, uncertain in both religious and literal interpretation. Bellino shows that this word, literally TVL, can be either written as and produced Tevel to mean world universe, or either, if we add one more dot, becomes Tevel, which means abomination, perversion. Due to this, very simple mistakes can create huge contradictions in the Bible or may induce its believers into doing or believing the wrong things. Bellino asserts that his translations follow one single rule. Let's pretend that what is written in the Bible and what the authors wrote is 100% accurate without any theological interpretation. Because theologians, argues Bellino, follow the same rule. They are pretending that the Bible is talking about a spiritual God, and they have modified this book to make it fit their religious narrative. Bellino's main thesis is based on the translation of a few core terms. He proposes a reading of the Bible through substitution of the theological or uncertain terms with their Hebrew transliterations, and by following this guide, you can verify his statements with a physical Bible or online Bible on your own. According to Bellino, when reading the Bible we should substitute God with Elohim, substitute Lord or Eternal with Yahweh, substitute Most High with Elion, the leader of Elohim, substitute Almighty God with El Shaddai, substitute Spirit with Ruach, substitute Glory with Kavod. According to Bellino, the term God is the unjust theological translation of the term Elohim, a plural term meaning gods, often singularly used as Eloha, related to El, who became Allah to the Muslims. The plurality of this term is considered a majestic plural by theologians, which Bellino refutes stating that the correct translation remains uncertain. Elohim, based on the context, may either refer to Yahweh or foreign deities like the Moabite god Chemosh, the Sidonian goddess Astarte, angels or mortals such as judges or kings. How possible is it that Yahweh was a simple king made God by his people? A bit like King Xerxes I for the Persians, or like the pharaohs for the ancient Egyptians. Is this a case of euhemerism? A true story exaggerated to the point it became a legend? According to Bellino, some parts of the Bible can prove it, like Deuteronomy 32, 8 to 9 and 12. In Deuteronomy 32, 8, following the rules of Bellino, we substitute most high with Elion, which means the one that stands above, representing the highest military rank, the general. 
In the oldest Hebrew texts, it is not written that it was divided among the sons of Israel, but among the sons of the Elohim. Therefore, Elion was dividing the territory among the sons of Elohim. Yahweh, in this division, was assigned the people of Israel, because other territories were assigned to other Elohim, like Kamosh, Milcom, Dagon, Astart. In Deuteronomy 32.12, we notice that Yahweh alone led Israel. No other foreign god Elohim was with Yahweh. How can there be other foreign gods when Yahweh is supposed to be the only God? In the first commandment of the Hebrew Bible, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yahweh clearly knows that there are other gods Elohim ruling other territories, and he wants you to only follow him. According to Bellinio, the Salam 82.1 is the nail in the coffin to the theologian theory of the plural majestatus where Yahweh takes place in a divine council among other gods, Elohim, which proves that Elohim is not one but many, because obviously God cannot sit alone in the divine council. God being all-powerful and all-knowing, according to Bellinio, are theological concepts based on extra-philosophical conjectures for God to be the creator of the universe. But these concepts in many cases are disproven by the Bible itself. In Genesis 18, 1-2, Bellino states that in Hebrew, there's no concept of appear from nothing. The Hebrew verse means to come physically. If it were to be true that God appears, why does he need water to clean his feet? Did his feet get dirty because of the sand? Why does God need to drink, eat, and take rest like mortals? And when God reveals that he's thinking about destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 18:20-21. Abraham tries to convince God to not kill the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, stating, What if there are 50 good people in Sodom and Gomorrah? Will you kill everyone if you know that there are good people among bad people? And God replies that if he finds 50 good people in Sodom and Gomorrah, he will forgive everyone. And Abraham, what if there are 45? Will you kill them anyway? God replies, no. Abraham, what if there are 40? And Abraham keeps dealing until he convinces God not to kill anyone if he finds ten good people in Sodom and Gomorrah. If I find, I will spare the whole place. And Bellino asks, if God is all-knowing, why does the Bible say that he does not know how many good people there are in Sodom and Gomorrah? Cannot God see in the soul of the people? Why is this out of his control? Then Bellino adds, good people, as mentioned in Genesis 17, 10-12, means circumcised people, which is the symbol of the alliance with Yahweh, and therefore, Yahweh must check everyone to see if they are circumcised. This explains why Yahweh does not know how many people are good, because the circumcision is a hidden symbol of his alliance. Bellino states with reference to Samuel 15, 2-3, that it should be clear by now that Yahweh is a military general, not concerned with love and compassion, but war and utilitarianist methods to defend and expand the land of Israel, no matter how much blood is shed. Bellinio's literal reading and interpretation of the Hebrew Bible is the most controversial part of his research. According to theological interpretation and deeming everything true and realistic, like Jesus walking on water, leads Bellino into believing that an unknown civilization called Elohim may have arrived on our planet and shared their DNA with us when we were still apes to continue their species. All the ancient civilizations tell us that the sons of the stars created us, states Bellino when comparing the Hebrew Bible with other scriptures and mythologies. Bellino argues that the biblical Hebrew has no words that describe the concept of creating from nothing and the concept of eternity, and that the Bible starts with Bereshit, which means in the beginning of this story, not the beginning of the world. Bellino argues that in the beginning, an unknown species called Elohim came to our planet, and that they created a fenced botanical garden with all kinds of fruits in Eden, located between Anatolia and the Caspian Sea. The Elohim then took Adam from the outside world. They did not create Adam and put him to work in it, creating Eva through clonation of his DNA from the rib or iliac crest because Adam was having sexual intercourse with all the animals in the Garden of Eden. According to Bellinio, the Elohim created men with their Salem, which is something material that contains their image, which was Salem, cut or extracted from the young male Elohim. The Elohim were purifying their blood, extracting their Salem, then injecting it into the Homo erectus to create the Homo sapiens. 
or probably, the Elohim, mentioned as the sons of God in Genesis 6, 1-2, may have shared their DNA through sexual intercourse with our ancestors. Early humans lived over 900 years, but when the Elohim stopped sharing their DNA, the human lifespan dropped to 120. Bellino argues that there's not only one Garden of Eden, but many, one of which is the Garden of Alcinus, described by Homer in the Odyssey, where there was no summer or winter. The food was being produced continuously and artificially. Bellino states that the Elohim modified many crops, like the wheat, which was inedible 10,000 years ago, to make it suitable for human consumption, and injected with agrobacterium, the potatoes in South America for the same reason. Even sheep were created genetically, argues Bellino. Don't you find it odd that the sheep require men to survive? If we do not cut their wool every three months, they die of suffocation because their wool grows continuously. The sheep were created for us. A peculiar characteristic of the Elohim is that they love the aroma of burnt fat, as mentioned in Leviticus 3.16, which is the same aroma that the ancient Greek gods love to smell during offerings, a characteristic that is spread all over ancient Greek mythology and other mythologies. Another important aspect is the advanced technology used by the Elohim in the Bible. In Exodus 33.18, Moses asks to see the glory of God. Bellino states that glory should remain untranslated as chaos, and the context will give us the meaning. From the context, the chaos of God is a physical vehicle that is so powerful that kills whoever sees it. And God cannot control his chaos. As a consequence, when Moses comes down from the mountain, his face is burnt because of the exposure. In Exodus 16.10, the kavod is seen in a cloud, which means that his kavod can also fly. In the book, La Caduta Deli Dei, by Mero Bellino, he states that the cherubim are vehicles similar to flying motorcycles on which the Elohim sit, that the seraphim are generators of light inside the homes of the Elohim, and that the Ark of Covenant is a generator of electricity. In multiple occasions, states Bellino, the Elohim use weapons of mass destruction, like nuclear bombs, biological and chemical weapons. One example, he thinks, is the destruction of Ur and Sodom and Gomorrah, which is described in Genesis 19.12-29. The Bible, according to Bellino, is one of the many books written by an ancient civilization. The Bible calls our creators Elohim. The ancient Greeks call them Theoi. The Sumerians call them Anunnaki. The Norwegian mythology calls them Aesir, and they are known as Varakocha in the Inca mythology. You may either believe that the content of these books is false and pure fantasy, but how is it possible that everyone came to the same conclusion? Why does every ancient civilization mention that we came from above, from the sons of the stars? Bellinio states, We should take into consideration the literal side of the Bible void of its theological interpretation because there are many Elohim in the Bible and there is no God. The literal side of the Bible proved to be fundamental in analyzing the historical events of our past. We discovered the Hittite civilization because it was mentioned in the Bible. It is important to keep our mind open, because no matter how absurd something may seem, what matters is obtaining more answers. Heinrich Schliemann was mocked and ridiculed for believing the Iliad and Odyssey were telling a true story, but when he discovered Troy, the city contended by the Trojans and Achaeans in the Iliad, everyone shut up. Heinrich Schliemann found Troy because of the let's pretend that method. If he was as arrogant as the other archaeologists, now Troy would not be discovered. The Hebrew Bible, states Bellinio, is a book that has nothing to do with us. It should be relatable only to the Hebrew people. It is a book they wrote for themselves. This book was then improperly adopted, reread, reinterpreted, and re-explained by theologians. The more we read the Bible and the more we study theology, the more we understand that theology talks as if the Bible did not exist. What keeps the church alive is that the Bible, despite being the most solid book in the world, is also the least read of all. And those few people who read it read only a few chapters or verses, and unfortunately, already with the filters of theological education. In his book, Il Falso Testamento, there is a chapter titled Biblical Horror, where Bellinio lists some of the scariest and heartbreaking parts of the Bible. Numbers 31, 17 to 18, where God asks to kill everyone and enslave virgin women for themselves. And lastly, Numbers 31, 35 to 40, 
where, after the war with the Midianites, God received spoils of war in the amount of 675 sheep, 72 cattle, 61 donkeys, and 32 virgin women. Why does an all-powerful, all-knowing, and self-sufficient God need animals in 32 virgin women? Let the believers answer, states Bellino. The research of Mero Bellino has been refuted on many occasions by Hebrew and Christian theologians and scientists. Here are some of the most common points. Hebrew scholars agree that the term Elohim refers to God who is a spiritual God. The term is plural because it may represent the transition from the polytheist belief, the belief in many deities, to monotheism, the belief in the only one God, Yahweh. Thousands of translators have translated the Hebrew Bible through history, and many translators are revising the Bible in light of new discoveries every day. The evilness of God in the Bible may be justified as actions that God needs to perform for the better good for his creation. Many scientists agree with Bellinio that the Bible was written by the Hebrew people to talk about their civilization like many societies before. But scientists disagree both with religious scholars and Bellinio on the validity of the Bible and any other holy book as a source of knowledge and research. Both the religious belief of creationism in the Bible and the theory of the ancient astronauts proposed by Bellinio ignore the scientific theory of evolution by natural selection, which is agreed by the scientific community to explain clearly how life developed on our planet. Archaeologists argue that there are no remains of an alien civilization on our planet like the Kavod, the Ruach, or the vehicles used by the so-called Elohim. Advancing this hypothesis may actually diminish the unknown techniques that our ancestors adopted in building megastructures like pyramids, ziggurats, and monoliths. A famous Italian chemist, Dario Bressanini, refuted the alien wheat theory by Bellino. This theory states that the Elohim genetically modified the wheat 10,000 years ago to make it suitable for human consumption. Dario Bressanini states that DNA mutations of wheat and other plants happen randomly and can't be proven to be linked to aliens. The nail in the coffin to Mero Bellini's theories, argue his enemies, could probably be his superficial non-academic research methodology, which we can demonstrate with this last claim of his. Bellino, in a public debate in Turin, showed a picture of the Temple of Luxor in Egypt, which seems to portray a spermatozoan coming out of the penis of the god Amun-Ra. How could the ancient Egyptians know about the shape of the spermatozoa thousands of years before the invention of the microscope? Bellino argues this to be an irrefutable proof that the aliens were giving their technology to ancient civilizations. Very soon, though, his theory was refuted by Egyptologist experts who interpreted the sentence for him. The pictograms represented are respectively an ox horn at the bottom and an amphora that is pouring water on the ox horn, the meaning of which is purification. This pictogram belongs to a whole sentence, a sentence that is written from the top to the bottom and represents an offering from Pharaoh Alexander the Great, when Alexander was crowned Pharaoh of Egypt, to the deity Amun-Ra. The sentence means, perform a purification with five grains of incense from Upper Egypt, Southern Egypt. Scientifically speaking, the theories proposed by Bellino belong to the pseudoscientific hypothesis of the ancient astronauts, who came to our planet in prehistoric times and gave origin to the human species through their DNA or clonation. These claims seem to be related to the realist religion created in the 1970s in France, which believes that the Elohim have historically been mistaken with the gods of the Hebrew Bible, and that the prophets Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, and Rael have been trying to guard humans from technological developments to avoid nuclear apocalypse, and, once peace is achieved, the Elohim will return to exchange their technologies with the humans and establish a utopia. I created this video with the intent of spreading a comprehensive summary of Mero Bellino's ideas so that many more researchers internationally can evaluate his claims critically, especially experts in Biblical Hebrew. In the description, you can find the links to Bellino's websites, YouTube channel, and books. Did you enjoy this video? If yes, click on the right or left to see one more. Have a good day!